of bringing to the fore the wonderful women, in fact, who dictated the pace of our independence. Now, when we talk about the big six, it's all men. And when we talk about the Trinity, it's all men. There's no woman in there. That is why our Trinity in the African history class is father, mother, and child. My brother, my sister, that is 3FM. Today, my brother, my sister, we're going to be talking about one of the underestimated and under-celebrated women of Ghanaian independence. If you are ready, I am more than ready to introduce into the African history class the woman who was born in December 1918, nine years after Kwame Nkrumah was born, and she was born in Busia. Oh, a great-granddaughter of the great King Bonsue. If you are ready, I am more than ready to introduce uh, Hannah Esi uh, Bedu uh, Kujo. Oh my God, Hannah Yabo. Esi Yabo. Bedu Yabo. Kujo. Hannah is spelled H A W N A H S E is E S I. Bedu is B A D U. Kujo is K U D J O. E, my brother, my sister, a great granddaughter of the great King Bedou Bonsue. How many of us remember the name? The great King Bedou Bonsue. He was the one who terrorized the white man who came into the area, killed a lot of them. He was finally overpowered and his head was cut off and taken away all the way to the white man's land in the West. It was returned recently for reburial right here in Ahanta Mine. Yeah! Today, Yabo. we are talking Yabo. about the great Hana Esi Bedukujo. She was born in December 1918. Yes, sir. Oh, listen. Hi, this is going to blow you away. And she was born in Buzia. Yes, sir. near Discover. Now, Buzia, how many of us remember Buzia? There was a time it was the headquarters of Elephantiasis in Ghana. In fact, Filariasis. You, you know the mosquito that causes Filariasis or Elephantiasis? You could find that right there in Busia. And it made tourists run away from that area. Nobody wanted to go there. But it looks like that was totally uh, controlled. And now people freely go into that area. Busia near Disco. My brother, my sister, she was an Ahanta woman very powerful and very strong. She was born in December 1918. Her parents were Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Datsun of Buzia. She was raised up in the traditional Ahanta way. Her parents had 10 solid children. And oh my God, yes. Mm, 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 mm. 10 solid children. And she was the youngest and the most pampered. In those days, many children were not allowed to go to school because they saw school as a way of having the slave master steal the children's brains and introduce them to some of the terrible things of the West. But she, at a very young age, was interested in education and she would cry so much when other children were going to school and she was seated at home. She decided that she would also go to school and she demonstrated that by the loud cries that she exhibited every now and then. So she was asked to go to school and she did go to school. She will return singing a lot of the songs that were taught them, including London bridges burning down, burning down, burning down, London bridges falling down, my fair lady. Sometimes she would sing, blah, 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 ship. Have you any wool? Yes, kind master, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dem, but none for the little children who are down the lane. And then in to continue, holy, holy, down the lane. Yeah, look, son, we are one letter, madam, son. Yes. Yeah. None for the little child who cries down the lane. Hear me now. Now she will sing some of the songs. She will dance. And her parents, Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Datsun, were most excited to see her grow from strength to strength in education. Hi. Now what school did she attend? She started her elementary education at the Busia Methodist School. And when she completed, she made it to the second day Methodist School. Oh gosh. And after finishing school, she decided that enough was enough. Hey. She went all the way to Takwa to join her brother. The brother was called Kwame. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And over there, oh gosh.
Russia. She became a dressmaker of repute. Then she met a man by name, J. Kujo. In fact, J.C. Kujo. J.C. Kujo fell in love with this woman. Oh, one thing led to the other. They tied the knot. Don't do. And that was what it was. Hear me now. When they got married, unfortunately, the bug that brought them together dissipated and they decided to divorce. When they divorced, she decided that no man was worth her time anymore. So she spent all the time with her, her brother. Oh, Uncle Kwame, as they called her in the area. Remember that Uncle Kwame himself was a man who was a very powerful supporter of the UGCC in those days. Oh my God. He would run around with Kwame Nkrumah from 1947 all the way, even before Kwame Nkrumah arrived from the West. He was running around talking about the UGCC. And when it was agreed that they needed a general secretary, one with the Gideon boots, one with the flex of the African prince, they looked for Kwame Nkrumah and decided to bring him over. And look at what happened. When Nkrumah arrived, he went from every nook and cranny, making sure that everybody was tied to the girdles of the UGCC. He turned the UGCC from a common tea party to a full-fledged political party. Hear me now. This is the African history class. This is 3FM. Hear me now. Now Kwame Nkrumah made his way all the way to Takwa. And he went there to talk to the people in the area about the UGCC. Hey, Kwame Nkrumah was a foot soldier. He went into every nook and cranny. Remember, when he arrived in Takwa, he was stationed in the house of Uncle Kwame, the big brother of our heroine for today, Hannah Esi Bedu Kujo. And see what happened now. Hey, Kwame Nkrumah stayed in the house for the few days that he was there to talk to the people. And every day, he and Kwame would go out talking and preaching to the people. Oh my God, have mercy. Yes, he was called Emmanuel um, Kwame Datsin. Oh my God. Now listen to the interesting thing that happened. Watch it. Hey, when they went out preaching or talking about politics and returned home, this was the woman who cooked all the sumptuous dishes for Kwame Nkrumah to eat. One day Kwame Nkrumah asked her, hey, listen, since I came here a couple of days ago, whenever we go out, I don't see you following us. Why are you not doing that? She was so surprised that uh, Kwame Nkrumah asked her that. She said, you go out to talk politics. Women are not supposed to do politics. Years later, this was what our heroine for today, Hannah Esibedu Kujo, wrote, and I read that to you. Somewhere in June 1947, we received a charming gentleman. He was introduced to me by my brother as Kwame Nkrumah. General Secretary of the UGCC. During the day, my brother went out with Kwame Nkrumah to address various meetings of the local UGCC branch in town. One day, as they came back and I was serving Kwame Nkrumah, he asked me why I have not been attending the UGCC meetings in town. I was amazed by this question and I honestly told him I thought politics was only men's business for the next 20 or so minutes, Kwame Nkrumah explained to me all they were doing and the importance of everybody, especially. By the time Kwame Nkrumah left, my interest was aroused in politics. At work, I began explaining issues to my um, colleagues, seamstresses, and customers. Whenever I was traveling to visit my dressmaking clients, I talked on trains about the need for our liberation and urging people to join the Takwa branch of the UGCC and summoning people together to hear news of the campaign of self-government. This was what she was doing. This was what she wrote. In fact, in those days when we had preacher men preaching in the buses and all those things like we see now, she was on the trains and the buses talking about liberation and independence. She was one of the few women who climbed on buses and trains not to preach the Bible or to preach Jesus. She was on the buses to preach the independence of this great country. What a woman. See what happened now today. We're talking about Hannah A.C. Bedukujo, born in Busia, near Discover. Oh, in 1918, the December Christmas of that year. Listen to what happened now. Hey, very soon Kwame Nkrumah started having problems with the UGCC. 
Remember, they were arrested in 1948. And the UGCC members, the so-called Big Six, started telling him that he was too known. Too known. Someone who too known. What kind of too known? Some are chin. They are chin. They are not. Argentina is aware, sir. You see, independence at the earliest possible time. Who can't hear? Who can't change? Who can't hear? Who see independence now? Someone who? Someone who too known? No. Kwame Nkrumah apologized to them whilst they were behind bars. And look at the interesting thing that happened. It was this same woman, Hana Esi Bedukuju, who climbed buses and trains, asking people to donate money. And she used that money to campaign for the release of Kwame Nkrumah and the rest of the so-called Big Six from behind bars, single-handedly. This is a photograph, my brother, my sister, that you can see holding the little baby in her hand. She was a burgeoning power of politics my brother my sister she was able to raise money to be able to campaign for the release of Kwame Nkrumah and the rest of them from behind bars and when Kwame Nkrumah came out the UGCC started talking about deposing him and she was one of the seven signatories who cried for Kwame Nkrumah to be reinstated in the UGCC as the general secretary but the people were adamant and Kwame Nkrumah decided to walk out when he walked out she became a founding member of the CYO my brother my sister what is the CYO hey, this was Kwame Nkrumah's early youth movement oh my god and when it came out she was part of it Hey, she was one of those who campaigned for Kwame Nkrumah, got the market women and the dressmakers all over to come and help with the independence of this great country. In 1951, Kwame Nkrumah won a seat. Oh my God, what was the seat he earned? He was in charge of government business. And there, oh my God, he rose all the way to the prime minister position. And what happened? See what happened? She was moving around. Helping Kwame Nkrumah with his campaigns, raising money. She even founded the All Africa Women League in 1957. Same year, Ghana uh, became Ghana from out of the Gold Coast. See what happened now? Now uh, it was a Pan African movement. She moved from place to place, especially in the northern region. And she encouraged women to heat water to bath their children. That will kill a lot of the germs. She was also able to speak to the outside world that donated a lot of clothing, which she used in a campaign against nudity. Better still, nudism. Oh gosh. A lot of children would go to school naked, especially little children. Some of them would not wear shoes. Some of them would walk around walking naked, just like we see in some of our villages in Ghana today. She campaigned against nudity and provided free clothing and shoes. Now, the Kruba government was not happy about it. Now, if we must do this, let us do it from our own power. Do not let us start asking outsiders, the Westerners, to send us their used clothing. No, we don't want that. So, they started clipping her wings and asked her not to run too fast. From her own pocket money, she went into the northern region of Ghana, and help the northerners, especially the women, to get their own jobs and be able to raise families in the right way, as in clothing them well, cooking proper meals for them, and so on and so forth. Today we're talking about Hana Esibedu Kujo. Oh gosh. <laughs> Now, in the days of Kwame Nkrumah, she became the national organizer for the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. Oh, and then she rose to the point of becoming the propaganda secretary of the whole CPP and uh, government business. Hey, she became very powerful. Everybody knew her. Hey, later, she even dealt with the ministry. Oh my God, that took care of women and children. And that was where her interest was. And on Women's Day, oh my God, she was ready the eighth day of March every year to celebrate it all over Ghana. It was almost like the Independence Day of Ghana. Women will come out in their numbers. They'll be educated on so many different things, new and old. She was the champion of all the women in Ghana. Now, in 1966, when Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown, the 24th day of February, the darkest day in Ghana, oh, she decided to move out of politics and never to be part of politics again. Hey, she told the UC, UGCC in the days, if Kwame Nkrumah is not reinstated, then there is no 
women joining these people. Kwame Nkrumah was smart. He knew the importance of women in politics. He was the only president who recognized the importance of women in politics and kept them all the way through his presidency, gave them very interesting positions that many other people would never have dreamt of giving to women. And the women loved him. So when he was overthrown, all the women stepped back. In fact, Kwame Nkrumah was the greatest. Now here what happened, she continued to go down to the northern region of Ghana, support them with her philanthropic works. She did that and did that. Now listen to what happened, man. On the eighth day of March in 1986, which was the World or International Women's Day, she was on stage talking about, oh, women coming together to take care of their children, to take care of their husbands, and to take care of the nation. The following day, the ninth day of March, she died. Oh, what a woman. She died a day after her favorite celebration, International Women's Day, on the ninth day of March in 1986. Her obituary was published on the eighth day of May in 1986, and it read, she was a priceless gem who in no small measure contributed to the political emancipation of Ghana from the clutches of imperialism. The vacuum created by her demise is in spiritual terms, though temporary, will be difficult to feel. A funeral took place at the Calvary Methodist Church in Accra on the 6th of July in 1986. Today we remember this great black woman. Today we remember you, the great granddaughter of the great King Bedou Bonsue of the Ahanta land. Today we remember you, mommy. Mommy, I see a guy, guy you. Mommy, me see a guy, guy you. Oh, mommy. Mommy, why have you? Mommy, why am I a you, mommy? Oh, mommy, Hana Esibe Dukuju. Who do you mean go? Missy, who do you mean go? Minuba go. Oh, mommy. <laughs> oh, mommy. Mommy, Missy, Minuba go. Mommy, Missy, Minuba go. Yeah, mommy. Mommy, Missy, why have you? Oh, mommy. Mami, me new bako, me new bako wate, me new bako, me new bako, mami, me say me new bako. Yeah, mami. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, how would the life of Hana Esibe Dukuju, the great granddaughter of the great King Bedu Bonsue, the great woman of Ahanta land, this powerful black woman, oh, who will not stop at anything with her philanthropism, oh, her love for liberation, her love for independence. How will her life story impact your own life in contemporary times? In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Be an any or lay, mini or bafe, yenzunda kagani, meza kayini, ye aim pabango, bokaya nun, fifia yenya, nukaina wo, banaehu, ebayadan, lela and jima singa bekune, lela and jima singa beri. Oh, mommy. Do, do, 